Welcome to the Virtual Power Teams podcast, the number one podcast for working remotely and building powerful virtual teams. My name is Peter Ivanov, international keynote speaker and author of the book Virtual Power Teams, translated in six languages. Tune in every Tuesday for the very latest in virtual leadership or visit my website, peter-ivanov.com. In this episode today, I will give you 10 effective tips for virtual sales and negotiations. Now with um, coronavirus, we were forced to, to work from home and this had a significant impact on the salespeople. Some of them were used you know, to face their customer. They actually enjoyed this interaction with the customer customer face-to-face, -face. they were used to pace their body position, you know, if they sit, cross arms and so on, and that gave them comfort. And also as a sales professional, you probably know that gives you, you know, tools to influence the other person. Now we have to do this online and we have a limited ability to, you know, to see the whole body, to influence and uh, much further uh, our communication ways are, are, are limited. So how to still influence people and have an effective sales and negotiations with your uh, online potential clients and leads. And the other effect actually from Corona was that now it's much easier to get more people in the, in the sales call. You know, it just virtually doesn't matter where you are. You can get the decision maker, but you can get the influencer and some consultants and some impacted users and so on. So all of a sudden, as a salesperson, uh, you have to deal with more people at the same time and online on top, which creates and presents some challenges. Now, I will give you 10 tips as promised. And uh, the first one, the first four of them are related to the preparation and strategy, your virtual sales and negotiation strategy, and how do you prepare for them? For example, online, you could influence uh, your potential uh, client uh, delivering a, a bite-sized information, bite-sized content in order to keep him hot. When I say bite-sized, these are shorter videos, ideally, or well-designed uh, visually content, which can deliver the benefits of a product in a very digestible way. You know, we, we are now overwhelmed with information. We don't have the patience to listen long, but if it's well, ideally like not more than a minute in a video format, a message highlighting particular benefit or a reference or a case study and so on, this bite size deliver on a regular basis, have a significant, significant impact uh, and influence your potential client in your favor. Second one, and this is basics in uh, not just in online and in, in traditional sales, but now becomes more important. You do the research of your decision making unit properly. These are the typical five roles that you have. You have the gatekeeper, somebody who would open the door for you in this enterprise, being the executive secretary or somebody who is will, will, will open and then will introduce you to the right people. You have the influencer. Maybe not the ultimate decision maker, but the one which opinion would hold and will have weight for making the decision. You have the user where you need to convince with the benefits for, for the usage, not so much cost or risk and so on. You have to advocate somebody who will uh, be able to uh, kind of uh, support you and advocate your position and the benefits that you deliver. And then you have the ultimate decision maker for sure, the one who has the budget and signs off. So. When you do this online, you have to make the research properly. You need to identify these people. Uh, you need to identify the benefits because they have a different needs and hopes and fears. So you could address them. And this is part of the preparation, which when you hit the ground in the online meeting, you could uh, address and deliver the powerful messages according to their needs. The third tip. Um, deliver your value from the start so people can see the benefit within the first 30 seconds. Usually, you know, in the, in the kind of not online sales, you have a single person, you could start with the questions like what keeps you away at night, you could build a problem and then uh, tune your solution. In online, uh, you need to start with the benefit first so you can grab their attention. Otherwise, the distractions in the online meeting are much more, you know, people can get easily distracted. So start with your benefit statement, start with your elevator pitch, if you wish, well prepared, so you can grab the attention and then explore. Now, frame the discussion in the area, that's the tip number four, where you offer unique value. Again, uh, people have 
unlimited access to digital information. They can research your company. They could research the competitors. So don't uh, kind of hit um, around the bush. Go straight with the value which you offer unique, which distinguishes you from, uh, from the competition. And in virtual teams, as I said, you can bring more people uh, you know, your, your potential client can bring more people to the table, but uh, less is more. That's why in the preparation, we go for bite-sized content. That's why during the meeting, we focus on particular unique benefits and we allow for more time to explain it. If you go with a more, more, more and allow for less time to engage and explain, that would have rather, uh, from my experience, negative effect. So frame the discussion in the area where you have unique value. Now, number five, um, again, first four and even first seven are related to preparation before the meeting. And again, that's the key distinction for online, um, even for decision making. Even um, and in my, of my previous episodes, I was referring, you could do a lot of things uh, online in advance, not synchronous in the same meeting, but asynchronous, particularly if you have a, a client which have a global presence and some people will be uh, attending from Australia, the other from America, completely different uh, part of uh, the day. You could prepare things and uh, online allows to prepare like for decision making uh, within your organization, you as a manager can write a blog, list the options, uh, list the pros and cons and invite people to contribute. So give them 24 hours, for example, and when they arrive on the meeting and you clearly say the purpose of the meeting is to make a decision, you will already have the prevailing views listed. So similarly in the sales, you could do a lot of the influencing work in advance. And then tip number five is create a safe space for your prospect to admit that they have a problem. Um, as we said, start with the benefits, start with your unique uh, proposition, and then you could explore uh, the space, but uh, do it in a way that they feel safe to admit they have a problem. And the best tool for that, as you know, is questioning. You know, don't go with the value question and then based on their response, frame uh, your uh, value proposition based on where you feel the pain and the problem that create a safe space for them to share. Tip number six is engage your audience, even if it's uncomfortable. We tend to hold lectures. We tend to know our sales speech and benefits and go one after the other. The key in online is engaging. And it is counter logical, counter natural, because sometimes we feel, you know, we have quite a big distance between us. We happen to be on the same screen, but very far away. So let me do my pitch. No. Engage, even if it feels uncomfortable. There was this Harvard Business uh, Review rule, the Harvard rule, I mentioned it in one of the previous podcast episodes. It, the Harvard rule is six minutes. You have no longer the six minutes to pitch, to lecture, then engage the audience. Give them a challenge and ask them to contribute. And you may say, but these are my potential clients. How can I give them you know, a challenge to that would turn them off? No, actually on the other side, if you do it smartly, uh, if you engage and uh, give them a particular challenge in a breakout rooms to debate around uh, maybe application and so on, in the end, the bottom line, they will feel more engaged and they will feel the difference that you make compared to the other kind of salespeople who just pitch and go uh, one after the other. Tip number seven, lean on visuals and make them dynamic. Just speaking as you see me now uh, or hear me now, is uh, is not sufficient support your points of view with powerful visuals so prepare your slides and put pictures don't just go for text whatever metaphors whatever pictures which link to your message put some visuals that help and if you have a multicultural multilingual um, you know client group that you pitch uh, the more which don't have English as a, as a native language, like myself, I'm not a native uh, English speaker, and you, you hear that, um, put strong visuals. That helps a lot and helps also the non-native speaker to get the message and to feel it not just with the left brain, but also with their right brain side, which is more about for emotional, you know, things parallel, uh, much quicker and so on. So uh, lean on visuals, make them dynamic. Um, and then use metaphors, as I said. Uh, this is part of the preparation. Put metaphors, make sure your company, for example, 
example, in one of my storytelling seminar, we find out metaphors like if your company was a, an animal or a car or a furniture or a, a programming mobile app, what would that be? Think about it and then think of three reasons why, what is the connection? So if you drop in such metaphors, that makes you also unique compared to the to competition and it stays It's because it creates immediately feelings. And usually people remember more how you make them feel rather than the facts that you share with them. So we covered seven. Now the rest are related, uh, the last uh, three, and there will be one bonus, are related to the in-meeting practices. So far, as you see, two thirds are related to the preparation and Online allows a powerful preparation and also impact with the bite-sized information. Now we're going into the meeting. Now the virtual negotiations and sales, if you come as a team, which is also comes the, 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 the easiness to bring more people to the table online uh, will provide you also the opportunity to bring some people with you as a team and you pitch as a team and negotiate as a team. So you can, the tip number eight is related to direct messaging and some do's and don'ts. Direct messaging mean you could be one platform, but you could have a private messages with your team uh, as the negotiation goes. And here you could use the same platform, for example, if you're in Zoom and you could use the, the, you know, the private message, but the risk of, you know, sending this to everyone is quite substantial. I personally did it several times. So uh, you may train your team, but even better is to use completely different platform like WhatsApp, Viber, or something that you could set private messages just to the people of, of your team. But this is an advantage. You, you cannot do it uh, if you are in the same meeting, but if you are online, you could do it without people noticing and share some information. So use the opportunity, but wisely managing the risk of sharing with everyone. Then give your team a clear role. So if you come up as a team, make the life of your potential client easier. So give them a clear role that help them orientate. Anyway, online, everybody is in the same virtual room and uh, you have different channels. So there is some insecurities uh, in, in the scenario. Give the clear roles and announce in advance. For example, somebody will open the pitch, will provide this unique uh, value, as I said, the, the top benefits. Then somebody maybe will uh, provide the structure of the offer. And then somebody will be answering questions, for example, if they have any questions. And somebody will close the discussion and maybe the ultimate decision maker or the one who, who will say, now that's you know, no go for us. So, Give the clear roles that helps the team to orientate and create more security in your online meeting space. That was tip number nine. And tip number 10 is pay attention to the non-verbal communication. Invite them to switch uh, on their cameras. Big time, big advantage. The best way to invite them, start switching, switching your own camera first. So this is, it creates some peer pressure for them to switch. If they don't respond, invite them kindly to switch the camera. That, creates much richer conversation. And if the camera is switched on, which is uh, quite an achievement for you already, pay attention to the nonverbal communication. And again, lead by example. See yourself, show yourself, like not just the head and not looking from the top, but make sure half of your body, if possible, is visible or at least significant part. So if you do some gesticulation with open hands, people can see it. It will be even more comforting if they see, if you take notes from their comments, uh, but not, you know, sending private messages. So pay attention to their nonverbal communication, to the face expression, and make sure you provide visibility. So you, in this way, you build uh, more trust and more safe environment. And maybe the last is a bonus tip, enter the meeting at the same time. Because if some people of your team enter first, you create opportunity for question, maybe they could slip information. So enter the meeting sharp at the same time, clarify the roles, put the benefits and, and go for it. So those were the tips, the 10 tips for uh, effective virtual sales and negotiations. I'd like to give you a further aspect. Um, now, negotiations and sales implies a little bit, not the win-lose scenario, but one is you know, a successful sale, the other has to pay. So I'd like to open the, the, the your, I would like to invite you to explore the way of thinking that it is win-win. We don't uh, compete in this particular case, but we cooperate. 
So this is under the banner of this competition. Competition, which is cooperation, the first three letters plus competition. And uh, as I mentioned in my previous podcast, uh, my new book, Power Teams Beyond Borders, bets a lot about competition. So companies which are currently competitors on the marketplace reach out open hand, uh, like now I have a biotech client which develops uh, a vaccine against uh, COVID-19. And in fact, they work together with their toughest competitors in the R&D space. They open books, develop the vaccine, share information also with universities and other research institutes. And when they produce it, then they on the market, they will be competitors again. So they will provide their best marketing strategies. So there is a room for uh, competition, for collaboration. And in order to do that, I'll give you some further uh, quick tips. With your competitors, don't play the win and lose game. There is still a win-win space. And also not just competitors, but with your suppliers and partners and so on. Go try to build power teams, not just between experts, but between holistic human beings. And for this, we had a podcast, you know, how to build trust. Let them introduce themselves as a human being, you know, still give them a chance to show their expertise, but also with the live journey, the format we had with the highlights, the moment you are most proud of, and the lowlights, the struggle, but you nevertheless managed to overcome. Discover their strengths. If you have to work, you know, in a competition environment with your even competitors, discover each other's strengths. For this, there were these five questions where you could peer coach each other and come up with the two main strengths, your internal perspective, and also how you perceive by others. And then build on that. Again, as a team, you don't have to have a 100 pages contract and sometimes more. If an issue arises, you would not refer to the contract and to the lawyers that put it together, but on a human level, you could resolve those issues. So to conclude, I just like to share one story, which is a, like a competition example in building at scale power teams beyond borders. It is related to a MOOC. Not sure how many of you know what is MOOC? MOOC stands for Massive Open Online Course. And I have a client in New York running MOOCs, and he has 37,000 people subscribing for his uh, online co course. And he's teaching them modern architecture. But uh, in order not to be dry, they are actually designing resilient schools for the Philippines. After the tsunami destroyed the Philippines in a few years back, and the infrastructure was uh, destroyed, the government decided to build the new schools in such a way, so there will be schools in a normal time, but they will be robust enough in a case of natural disaster, so they could provide shelter. And he was giving tips exactly how to design a modern school, but in a very robust way. The problem was that 30, 37,000 people subscribe. Over the course of six weeks, he was giving them online input to you know, the design and finish the, the, the design process. When the week five came, critical people were just dropping out. They learned enough for free, they were dropping out. Why for free? Because he was collecting the money in the end when they successfully finished the design and submit their design of the school. He tried to collect the money up front, but only 2,000 people subscribed. So we had a, a coaching session with his team of professors and wondered what to do and said, okay, let's divide the people in the groups of five. Self-organizing, not us, it will be a mammoth work. Self-organizing in groups of five, get together based on proximity, time zones, whatever principle work for you. They got together in groups of five. They presented themselves online with their live journey, you know, the lifeline. They discovered their strengths and then they were just developing one school. This group of five become a team of five. They split the work based on their strengths and they were just designing one school. And when the week, critical week five came, they just couldn't let their teammates down. There was already so much gravity between this group of people. It was already a virtual team with so much gravity. So 27,000 people still until the end. And uh, with just this simple measure, he had like half a million uh, US dollars revenue improvement. So when you put people, the personality in focus, you let people to present themselves as a human being, to connect on a human level and leverage on their strengths, even these not competitors, but people which just had a selfish interest to learn something and to, uh, to get a certificate, you know, they start operating in a cooperation level 
and the result was good for the entrepreneur and even better, you know, 27 by five divided by five, like 5,000 designs were awarded to the Philippines government. So I hope you had some uh, um, tips. The first 10 tips on the virtual uh, sales and negotiations. And the last one about building power teams beyond borders and have a win-win mindset and go for competition with your competitors and potential clients. I wish you good luck building your virtual power team so you could deliver a project faster, reduce cost, and develop your organization for the future. Big virtual power hack from me, Peter Ivanov, and I see you next week. <laughs>